Today we're making some everyday woodland DIY decor. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first project is going to be our mushroom trio. We're going to start off with some mushrooms. Mine are foam. I've used these in other projects. Love them. Little wood piece. That's going to be like a bottom or a base. Some little slices of wood. You can get these at Dollar Tree. A little bit of moss. And then some of this um, ground cover moss. And it's like in a little mat or a carpet. We're going to trim this off to make it a little bit easier to manage. It cuts off very easily. And then I'm just going to hold it in place and cut around it so I have exactly the right size. So once it is trimmed up, we're gonna add some hot glue and then put this right down in place. Now I thrifted this little mat of uh, moss, so I'm not sure where it came from, but I'm, I am certain any craft store has it. Dollar Tree may even have it at this point. Just gonna press it down nice and firmly and then we're going to make a base for that just using this little piece of wood looks like a little stump we're going to put that underneath there and that's going to be like a little riser for our project so i know that i like these three mushrooms and i want them to be together in a clump so i am going to take my hot glue and put right down in the middle and in between all the little pieces i'll have little strings everywhere that i have to clean up I'm going to hold them together tightly for a couple of minutes. You won't see how long I hold it, but give it time to dry. Then it's got a nice fat base for us to put it down on this project. If you are putting it one by one, you might want to try a different technique, but with this being so wide from the three of these, there's plenty of room for glue to hold it in place, but you're gonna have to hold it until that glue dries. Cause you see, as soon as I added glue, my little bundle tried to come apart. All right, so now I'm going to take a little bit of the Spanish moss. This just came out of my yard, but I think you can get this at Dollar Tree also, and you certainly can get it at craft stores. I'm just gonna press it down in the glue around the bottom where it's connected. This just kind of gives it like a little base. You know, if you've seen mushrooms grow in the wild, they grow out of the ground and they just push everything up around it. Almost like they're playing peekaboo. So maybe it pushed up through that moss. Who knows? Now these beautiful pieces of fern, actually each little piece that sticks out looks like a fern. So I'm just going to use those to my advantage and make these look like a full grown fern in a mini version, of course. So I'll pull off each little piece and use some glue here. You might want to use uh, some super glue or something that dries fast or use a cooler temp glue or just really be patient while each one of these pieces dries. You're going to have to help support them just a little bit until they dry. And you can pretty much tell when the glue turns cool that the glue is dry. It's just kind of what I go by. Now, ferns grow sort of from the inside outward, almost like a little explosion. So you'll have a clump and then they roll outward. They have little, um, little strands that grow up in little curls and then they stretch out and fall to the side. So that's what I'm doing with this fern, trying to make it look as natural as it would look in the wild. And someday, if you're interested, I'll take you for a walk around my yard and in the woods, and we'll look at the mushrooms that I have growing in my yard and all the little ferns and things that I have living in my yard because those things give me inspiration for my projects. And I think they might give you a little inspiration too. So this is how this looks. And I think it looks really pretty. I think this would be great on a tear tray if you're doing tear trade. If not, just sitting in your kitchen window or on your table uh, in a curio cabinet. You could set this down in the top of a mug or a wooden cup or bowl. You could put it in your dough bowl with some pine cones and other wild pieces that you found on your own nature walks. The next project is going to be a standing wreath. This is another mini 
I'm going to use some green and white pit berry, Dollar Tree of course, a mini wreath, it's just a grapevine wreath, another one of those wood pieces, and some baby's breath, a little bit extra of that fern, and then the same piece of um, mat, that, um, the moss mat, carpet, mat, rug, piece, flat. All right, then I'm just going to glue it down, same way as we did before. Measure it, cut it, glue it. I'm going to take off a segment of this. They are wound together, so you can just unwind them and then cut off whatever length that you want. And I'm just going to begin wrapping this all around my wreath. You could leave your wreath like this if you wanted to, but I like the idea of this looking like it is alive, like it has some life to it. So showing a blooming vine or a vine with berries to me shows that uh, it's life, you know, it represents life. So I'm going to go with my baby's breath and we're going to make each one of these its own individual little flowers because this is a mini so you wouldn't want to use a full size flower on here. It would completely cover it up. So we're just going to do uh, some clumps of three, they're going to be some little duos, they're going to be some that are single on there, and I'm just going to do it all around the front and sides of here because I just don't see the need to do the back, but by all means, if you're going to be looking at your small angles, do the back too. And then any little wild pieces that don't look right, you can just cut off, like the two that are kind of crazy looking in the middle there. I'm going to just trim those off in a bit. They, it was kind of uh, drawing my eye way too much. And the symmetry just was not there. I, and I, I couldn't deal with it, y'all. Couldn't deal with it. So then, that's how it will look after I've trimmed off the little stray ones from the center. And I know I want it to stand up, so I'm going to choose the flattest bottom of the wreath, the flattest section. I'm going to hold it right down in the center of that moss covered piece of wood until it is dry and then you can start adding in some fern the woods beside my house is full of ferns and when they start blooming they are absolutely beautiful there's like a a bayou or something down there a little swampy area and it is just full just teeming full of life down there it's frogs and squirrels and birds and mushrooms and all types of algae. It's just beautiful. The next project will be a daisy shadow box. I got a thrifted frame. Looks like it came from a craft store. These are also thrifted. They're little pieces of, uh, I think, plaster flowers and leaves. Kind of dirty, but we'll clean them up. I've got a parchment and a king's gold paints. A oak paint marker, a variety of brushes and sponge brush, and then a piece of parquet flooring. See, it's bendy. And then I've got two of these large popsicle sticks. Now for this base, we're going to fold the two sides up. There's some type of a wire that holds this in pieces. It's going to work to our advantage to help us make sides of a box, because this will be our shadow box. So I'm gonna take my first popsicle stick, kind of figure out where I need to cut it, and then just using my cutters here, I'm just going to cut it off on both ends so that I make a bottom, and then we'll make a top for this box. So the first two projects were probably something you would find in the base of the woods, in the shade, in the shadows, in the cool, but the daisies here are going to be on the edge of the property, right? They're going to be where the sun is peeking in. Now I'm just going to push those down into some hot glue that I've put there so that it makes a floor. And then I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing for the other side. Now in a moment, my camera is going to die. So I'll just go ahead and tell you what we did and give you a quick little idea of what we did when we get to that point. All right, so now we have the box, which is gonna be the back part of the frame, and then the frame will rest right on top of it. 
All right, so here's that marker. I'm gonna go all the way across with the grain on the frame. I'm also gonna go on the outside and the inside with this paint. Now, it's not the same color as the wood that's on the inside, so feel free to color your wood, if you have a piece of wood back, all the same color. But in the woods, we have a variety, so I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna be okay with it. I'm just gonna use a brush to clean up these little plaster pieces, and it gets all the dust out of the cracks and makes them perfect. See the difference? Now I'm going to do the same thing to the flowers. I'm going to put some of that parchment paint down there. And then I'm going to take a floral pick that we've taken the flowers off of for another project. This is why I save them. And right in the middle where they have the little openings, I'm just going to stick them down onto the branch with some hot glue. Originally, my idea was to put this on here to make it easier to paint. But then I thought, hey, you know what? Let's just leave them on the stem. Let's just leave them on this stem and we'll go with it. We'll make it work. So now that they're dry and the glue is cool, I'm going to start off by painting the petals. The petals are going to be that beautiful parchment color. And it's like an off-white or cream color. But you can use solid white uh, if you would like uh, on your flowers. Whatever type of flower you get, you can use wooden flowers, you can use sticker flowers. I know not everybody's going to find a plaster flower, but you can also use regular florals if you want to. This is just how you would do it if you found something similar to this. I'm taking two shades of green and a brown color, and I'm going to kind of get a little bit of each one of it onto my brush to start painting the leaves because I want my leaves to look like they are, you know, something that you would actually see in the wild. It's not a solid bright green, but it's going to have some variation in color. It's going to have some darker spots, some lighter spots. It's going to have some shadows and some highlights. And I'm going to do each leaf like this, just like on my flower. I did all the flowers in the cream color and let them dry. And while they are drying, we're working on the leaves. And I'm going to do the sides and the back too. And I'll give the leaves two coats, only one for the flowers. Kind of build in the color. Now I'm going to tap into a little bit of that brown and a little bit of the gold. I feel like Bob Ross right now. And then I'll have a little more gold on one side, a little more brown on one side. So it is going to give it a very pretty sort of an ombre in the middle of our flower. We're gonna make that daisy have a very beautiful center. And I'm just using a little foam brush to apply it. If you got a steady hand, go ahead and use a paintbrush. And don't worry, if you don't get it right the first time, you can just go ahead and do it again. Go right over the top and it'll be just fine. You see the difference in the color there, the variation, very pretty. Just tapping into that and put it on each one. Oh, and you can drop it like I did. Paint all over me, isn't that crazy? So if you press down and kind of pounce it up and down and give it just like a little twist, it seems to give you a finer edge, a better edge there. So that's what I'm trying to do. And there it is. I think it looks pretty. But you can use gold or orange or yellow, whatever color you want in the center of yours. I'm gonna set them aside, let them dry, trim off my wire. Then we can decide where we want them to go in the box. Keeping in mind that the frame has to go back on and I want it all to be seen. I'm gonna grab my E6000. You can use super glue or whatever type of long hold you wanna use. And I'm going to use hot glue in between just to hold it down until the E6000 has a chance to dry. And I'm gonna press it down until the hot glue is cool. And then it is secure. Now I've just placed my leaves where I think I might want them. And then I'm gonna add hot glue and E6000 to those to hold them in place. I should say that I should have used E6000, but at this point, I was only using my hot glue. It's Gorilla Glue, so hopefully it'll hold. I think the look of this is really cute. So I'm gonna grab that E6000 again. I'm going to add some of it here and there, all over the edge of the top portion of the walls here on the sides and then a little hot glue so that we can put 
the frame right on top of it. If you wanted to, you could also do like a, maybe a, a white finish or a white wash over this, but to keep it woodland, I'm going to leave the raw wood. I think that's pretty. We want to hang it. It won't sit flat because of the shape of the frame. So I'm just going to use the little joints between the wood as kind of a guide of where I want to put my hanger. And we'll just use jute for that a little bit right in that crack push that little piece of jute straight down into there and that will hold it in place and then once that is dried you can turn it over and you have a beautiful little piece piece that you can hang up ready faux flowers be beautiful here too so you could still do your frames, use faux flowers. Next project is a garden lamp post. This one is my favorite. So if you've stuck around, I'm so glad to have you here. I'm gonna use flat black paint. These little lanterns from Dollar Tree, I'm just gonna use one of those. I'm gonna use a variety of paints, mocha parchment and red, some paint brushes, some moss, This is just a little, like a crook that you can put a sign on. They came originally from Target. And some of these mushrooms from the same set as the flowers I used. And then a little miniature wreath. It's a great fine wreath. So I'm gonna start by painting. We're gonna take a little of that latte and parchment and we're gonna mix those together. What we're gonna do right now is to work on the base of those mushrooms and I want them to be sort of a creamy beige color. I wanna make them solid white. I've never seen a mushroom that is solid white. It's not to say they're not out there in nature. They're just not in my yard. So I'm gonna go over the bottom part, which is the underneath part of the mushroom and the stem. They have appropriate names, um, scientific names, but um, we're just gonna go with the bottom of the cap and the little stem, how about that? So we'll do all those and let them dry. We're gonna spray paint this. You can easily push this out. You just push on the top, turn it, and then the little light will pop out. So this will be painted completely black with the spray paint and the little loop on top also. I'm going to tear a piece of masking tape to fit over the bulb part of this light because it's going to get a spray of black paint as well and I do not want my light to be affected so we're just going to cover it up to make sure that it doesn't get any black paint on it. We want it to look like it's actually flickering. Now that the bottom has dried and our pretty little lamp or our little lantern is drying with its paint on it. We're going to add a little bit of brown to the red just so I have sort of a not so bright of a red but more of a, a richer deeper red. And I'm going to start painting the top. I want these to be similar to the other mushrooms that um, we crafted with. The, the foam ones that are red with the little cream colored dots on top. I'm gonna try to mimic that. So I'm just gonna carefully and slowly go around the top of this. And I'll do each one and I do get closer to the edge. I was just not very brave when I started. And then all of these will have a chance to dry absolutely completely before we move on with putting the dots on top. Because if you put white dots on the top of that, it is just going to bleed out and turn pink. We're gonna work on the base, which is this little grapevine wreath here. And I'm just tearing up some of this moss. I think this is reindeer moss, maybe. And I'm gonna start kind of gluing it down here and there on this wreath. I'm trying to find like if the backside's a little more flat, I try to kind of put that down in there and I'm gonna tuck it as if it is really growing in between there. We have live oak trees in our yard and there's uh, very pretty bright green moss that grows underneath the trees 
it's just gorgeous. It's just gorgeous when the light filters through on them. Mm. This is why I love woodland people. There's so, uh, so much magic and mystery and, and beauty in it. There's really beauty everywhere, though. If you, if you take a chance, you know, you, you take the time, I, I guess is a better word for it, to sit out and look and just not stress about other things. You just kind of keep an open mind and just feel the sun and take your shoes off and put your, your feet in the sand when it's warm outside. Just kind of connect back with, with nature. It's a great feeling. It's a, it's a very refreshing, connected feeling. We're all part of the circle of life, right? We can reconnect. All right, so now I'm going to take this beautiful, moss-covered beauty and set it aside to work on our dots. I got it all mixed in. I don't want it to be completely mixed. I want it to, you know, possibly get a little more brown and a little more white in different sections. And I'm going to start adding the little dots with the back of my brush onto the mushroom. Rather than using a brush which could maybe splatter or fan out, if you use the end of the brush, just the plastic part, just dot it in there, then you'll get almost perfect little circles. Perfect for nature anyway. You'll do each one of these like this. You can use a pattern on each one or you can just kind of be all willy-nilly about it. Just put them wherever you want to. And I did find that if you add more paint to the brush or you keep adding it frequently, it does make it a little bit easier. Otherwise, you kind of run out of paint. They are not all the same size, that's okay. We can make them a little bit bigger, just go right over the top. So here's my crook. It was not long enough, so I'm just going to use a piece of a floral pick and I just glued it on there and it had a little tape around it to hold it in place. And I'm gonna take some more of that same strand of uh, pitberry vine and I'm gonna wrap the vine around here because you know, vines grow up. They attach to anything they can attach to and they just wind their way up. So I thought this would be a perfect place to put a vine. And put it around this little crook. If you can't find something like this, you can make it with a piece of metal clothes hanger. You can use some type of a wire. Um, you could use a tree branch instead of this if you wanted to that has maybe a fork in the top that you could hang your lantern off of. That would be really pretty too. Now I have the additional length and I need that so that when I hang up my lantern, it doesn't sit on the bottom. It needs to have some space. And you can see here that I am gluing it in. I'm holding it where I want it and then gluing it. I'm gonna glue it all around where the opening is that I have this stuck through. And I put it in kind of a tight spot to help hold it still. You're gonna hold it until your glue dries or you can use some clamps or something to hold it in place. And that's what I decided to do. I'm gonna get it positioned right, get these clamps on here in the right way, and give that glue a chance to sit up nice and tight because I don't want this to move when we hang our lantern off the top. Perfect. So now we can start adding in the mushrooms. Part of this is going to be a little bit fuzzy because it wants to focus on the top of the crook there rather than focusing on the bottom, but it does clear back up. So when that happens, just beware, it does clear back up. Now I'm just taking the ends of the mushrooms where they will stick down where there's enough of a gap or opening around the little pieces of twisted vine. And I'm just putting those right down in there. It's gonna help hold it in place so that it doesn't fall over. And it looks like it's just bursting and growing right out of that moss, right out of that wreath. So I'll have a big one and a little one together. And then I'll do another one like that on the other side. You can see it's a little fuzzy, kind of in and out. My apologies. It's just what the camera does. Just gonna hold it, hold it in place. And one of my little flowers was falling over. Well, my, my uh, mushroom, I meant. And then I'll add another one over here. He's kind of peeking out underneath the cap. 
and this is how it will look. Very pretty. Here is our black lantern and I've just turned on the lights. So you can get an idea how it's going to look when it's hanging. I wanna put this little sign in. There were two signs that came with it. So I'm just using a stick. I'm gonna glue it in, put some glue on the back of the sign and then hold that in place with a clamp so that we can move on to something else. We don't have three hands, so it's good to have a clamp to help us out. I'll take some more of that moss and I'm not even gluing. I'm just tucking it in around where we push the candle back up through the bottom. And if you scratch any of your paint off when you do this, you can just take a black paint pen or a Sharpie and go over the spots where you knock the paint off. Simple, simple. We want this to look like it's been out in the woods for a while and moss will grow on just about anything in the wild. See the look of it? So I thought, yeah, let's go ahead and extend it to the top and down some of the little sides. So I'm going to start by just putting around the top little block. It's kind of in sections up there on the top, but I wanted to add just a little at a time until I had it the way I thought I would like it best. And so you have some going down the sides on this corner and on this corner. And that really changes the look. I think that is a really pretty look. We're gonna add some more of this vine to this lantern. So I'm going to wrap it around the stick to look like it has wound its way up. And then I'm just gonna wind it around two of the sections of the lantern on the outside. Not on the same piece that has the moss growing downward but on the piece beside it you know what i mean because i don't want to cover up the work i've already done so i'm just winding this around it just takes a minute and i don't even have to glue it in place but of course if you want to you can oh so pretty i wish i had a little fairy to put in here it would be so gorgeous i'm gonna have to get some fairies if y'all have fairies that you use with crafting could y'all please tell me where you bought them you know, if you like them, if it's a good quality, I would love to get some little fairies and some little good quality garden gnomes, other than what you see at the Dollar Tree. I mean, they'll work. If, if I need to use those, they will definitely work. But I want something that looks a little cleaner and a little more crisp. Pretty, pretty. So then, of course, let's just put a little more of those pieces of vine down here in the grapevine wreath. All you have to do is cut off a couple little sections and wrap it around your wreath. You don't have to use a small wreath, so if you don't have a tiny wreath like this, get a big one. You know, you can get a big one. Or you can wrap moss around a small round one. You know, like a, um, the foam ones, or maybe make one out of a pool noodle. And then wrap it with some moss. That would be pretty. Maybe paint it brown first. Here are our everyday woodland decor pieces. I'm in love, y'all. I hope you love these as much as I do. I would not say in particular that these are winter, spring, summer, or fall. I would like to think that this is something that could be around all year, especially if you live in the South like I do. We don't get snow, we don't get a lot of cold, we really don't, and we still have grass and we have green trees and we still have poor trees that are so confused about the seasons down here. Um, yeah. I think these would be really pretty. Do you like the woodland theme? Do you like woodland rustic? Because if you do, I would love to have you as part of my channel family because I know I love it. And I love doing rustic decor. You've seen my stuff before, you know how I do it. I always want to bring you some inspiration. Never expect you to do anything the way I do it using the same pieces that I do. Grab the inspiration where it gets you and use it and find something similar or find something, you know, let it spark something in you to maybe think outside the box and do something different. We don't all have to do the same thing and the same things don't bring each one of us the same amount of joy. I believe in you and I know you can do this. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'm going to see you again real soon. Bye.